I'm Sam Kaufman and uh, I run the uh, co-founded and run the Human Path, a school as well as uh, I also co-founded uh, Herbal Medics, a nonprofit. And I'm going to talk about a few plants here today. One of the plants I'm talking about is, is right here on my left is um, Petelia trifoliata, that is our, our um, wafer ash, um, a member of the citrus family. And it is, uh, you can tell that right at the moment you walk by it or if you brush against the leaf you can tell. It's got this citrusy kind of bitter type of smell, bitter and, 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 and citrusy at the same time. Really fantastic, amazing scent, an amazing taste to it. Uh, the flowers are just indescribably beautiful smell. And uh, it's got, the seed is, uh, is something that it was named for as well here. It's, uh, it's called hop tree. Uh, the seeds kind of look, again, this is where it gets the eight wafer ash as well, these little wafers that look basically like little ash seeds. And these are, um, these were used to make beer with actually at one time and they've got that same kind of hop hops kind of bitter taste to them right and we can use it for very similar things but let's just talk about first what part of the plant we use we use the bark and we use the leaf primarily you could actually use the seed as well but my preference is the bark and the leaf uh, you can use the bark and the leaf for separate things but uh, I actually mix the two together uh, the bark uh, being a little more of a febrifuge, more, more for like fevers and for cold and flu type of stuff, and the leaf being more for the gut. But I actually, I mix the two together and I just use them together and I find they work very well this way in any case. And I primarily use this whole, the wafer ash, more than anything I would say for the liver and for the gut. Um, the way that I normally harvest it is the bark is very thin, so it's just like I talked about with the prickly, uh, prickly ash, you can take the bark and you can just strip off everything, the outer bark, the inner bark, all together, and just you know prune the tree, pull that off, and then just mix it right in there with the leaf, and put the whole thing together and just do a fresh tincture of it. You can dry it as well, and you can percolate it, and I've done that, but I like the fresh tincture, actually. It's, very, it's a little more gentle, uh, but, but very, very profoundly medicinal, very profoundly medicinal. This is a plant I probably use in my clinics, I would say I use as much as anything else for the gut. Um, it goes in most of my gut formulas that have anything to do with um, something going on with the liver, first of all. So it's kind of a mild collagog, you know, so moves the liver, but also a very good bitter. Uh, so I've used this for things, especially one, one place that's really pronounced was for something like, uh, like GERD, like a gastroesophageal reflux disease, right? The people who are on medications for that, that are going off of medications for it, for instance, I've had great success with this, or just people who are just suffering from reflux all the time. Um, again, probably more than anything because of its collagog properties, but also as a profoundly good bitter uh, to use prior to eating. So normally in my formulas that I'll make, I will, the, the dosage is, is important, of course, but most important to me is when they take it. I have people taking this before they eat, 15 to 30 minutes before they eat. It's when I find this does the, the, most, uh, the most good. So uh, we can harvest the bark like I talked about. The leaf we can just take and, and harvest. We can strip the, the leaf off of the, after we've pruned the, the, the whole branch, uh, take off the bark, strip off the leaves, put the whole thing together, throw it in a blender, and again, I use somewhere around 30 to 40% alcohol. More water solubility, in my opinion, than there is alcohol solubility here. This one likes the water. So 30 to 40% alcohol is what I normally use for both bark and leaf. Uh, then at that point, uh, you know, I just do this typical maceration and strain. Dosage is can be anything from small to large. I mean, literally, you can go you can go with 15 or 20 milliliters a day of this, and that would be fine. But you usually don't need that much. I'll usually mix it in with other formulas, with other gut type formulas, depending on what I'm trying to do. I will use it in the second half of, say, kind of a biphasic um, a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth formula, for instance, where we're getting now we're getting back to hel helping the gut heal. This isn't so much, of, I don't think of it as much as an antibacterial or, or anything like that, although it probably arguably does. Uh, I think Michael Moore used to say that it had st certain properties to it that made antibacterial formulas stronger. But I really think of this as more of a healing, a gut healing formula uh, type of herb than I think of it as like a really strong antibacterial, for instance. Uh, and again, it's also a diaphoretic. It moves things. It moves the sweat. It's a little bit of a diuretic, the bark especially. Uh, and it just, it, you know, we get this kind of same thing I talked about with prickly ash. We get movement out of this herb, and especially in the gut. Um, 
so I'll mix it with, uh, formulate it with things like um, like burdock and dandelion root, of course, as well. But even stronger stuff like chelidonium, like a, a greater celandine, perhaps, uh, if I really want, or blessed thistle. Um, <clears throat> stronger, stronger, and then and then also uh, you you can balance it. I would put this somewhere in the middle of that kind of strength, that toxicity and potency uh, between something like, for instance, uh, artichoke leaf or, or or a chicory root on one end, on the, on the very gentle side, all the way up to something like uh, greater celandine for something on the very strong side. This is somewhere in that middle in that, I would say. And so because of that, you can use it pretty much indefinitely too. I've never had any problems with toxicity with this plant. Uh, and, and it's one of those that of course you don't, I never try to use herbs any longer than I absolutely have to. But um, you know, I've had, I've used protocols with this for, for a few months at a time uh, with, with clients who are namely things like going off of PPIs where they're, they're cutting their dose in half of their uh, proton inhibitor uh, type of uh, uh, formulation that they've been, uh, they're literally addicted to. They've been on it for maybe five years or seven years, way too long. And I mean, almost, uh, you know, that's, that's really, that shouldn't be happening anyway. And so if they go off it, they get this rebound reflux. It almost, you know, knocks them completely and puts them in an ER. So they really are almost addicted to these PPIs. And so, you know, taking it down a half at a time, you know, just basically tapering it off a half and then a quarter over a period of, of several weeks or even a couple of months and then increasing the dosage of this as a bitter prior to it, along with a few of the other herbs I talked about, depending on how gentle or how strong I want it, usually it's very successful as well. Um, the other thing I'd say about it, you know, on the beer making side, of, as I'm not really any kind of beer maker at all, but this is definitely one on the medicinal beer side. So if you're interested in medicinal beers, I've had students who are beer makers make and mix this one with prickly ash, and oh my God, it's just it's phenomenal. The beer is just like, it's. I mean, I, if I had the time, I would learn to become a good beer maker just to do this beer, just that one that I just talked about. That alone would be worth a career in beer making almost. It's so good so amazing and so medicinal. This is what our beers used to be probably at some point or another and our alcohols, you know, still to this day, some of them, you know, still are lasting from, from um, alcohols that were made for the digestive, um, uh, you know, this di di digestive tract. Chartreuse, you know, the only alcohol that had a color named after it was really a digestive bitters type of alcohol in the first place. So we get these medicinal um, aspects of, of really kind of a recreational drink almost and we get kind of the best of both worlds that way and this one really fits into that pattern as well.